Secretary, Secretary Mayor Pitt, um, could you give us um, the breakdown of the implementation of Justice 40 with the infrastructure package that's now passed and signed into law? And also, um, can you give us the construct of how you will deconstruct the racism that was built into the roadways that you talked to the Grio earlier when you broke that information with us? Can you talk to us about how that could be deconstructed? For sure, yeah. So you know, the principle of Justice 40 is that at least 40% of the clean investments in this bill will go to benefit the communities that are overburned, overburdened and, and underserved. So part one of that is defining those, those investments that are eligible, and that's a lot of it, and we're working to map out kind of program by program, mode by mode, uh, what would qualify. For example, if we're uh, buying clean buses, right, how do we make sure in terms of where those buses go? But also looking at the business opportunity, the jobs that are going to be created, the businesses that, that uh, will have a chance to compete uh, for, for the business opportunities it creates. That, too, I think is a very important element of equity here that's in the spirit of Justice 40. And again, we have a lot of guidance and oversight from the White House since that's an administration-wide initiative. But we know that we've got to build our own internal uh, kind of ways of, of uh, aligning and defining that inside the administration. As to where we target those, those dollars, you know, I, I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or that would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away uh, uh, putting to work. But that's such a heavy lift. I mean, you have to reconstruct <clears throat> communities that this happened to. As you said, some of these beltways and, and interstates and roadways were built before the Civil Rights Act, before the Voting Rights Act, and were made meant to be racist. But how do you go about redefining and replanning these roadways and communities that are already settled in yeah. um, since then? So What's interesting is it's going to vary by community, and we have to listen to the community. Sometimes it really is the case that an overpass went in a certain way that is so harmful that it's got to come down or maybe be put underground. Other times, maybe it's not that way. Maybe the really important thing is to connect across it, to add rather than subtract. And that's where we don't want to impose a one-size-fits-all answer uh, from here. But when we were out in Syracuse, for example, looking at I-81, we saw the local vision. Uh, for how they want to get past those divisions. And those local ideas are going to be taken very seriously as we try to meet the spirit of this law. Thank you. Go ahead, 